You know, when you look at one of these things working, you can't help but think, you know, what the heck is it? It must be one of the strangest vehicles ever dreamt up. It's a bit of everything, as you can see. Um, it's got the body of a boat, it's got propellers like an aircraft, and it hovers along about two feet above the surface of the water or the land like a, like a helicopter. And if you're wondering, like I have been, what sort of qualifications you need to get a license to drive one of these things, um, well, it seems to be a bit of everything. Um, you can come into it after having been an air pilot, you can come into it after having been a, a, a sea skipper, or you can come into it having been an ordinary car driver, I'm told. But um, they've brought it in so that we can go for a... a a spin in it or a fly in it, I don't know what you'd say with these things, so let's go. hit our top speed now of about um, roughly 45 miles per hour. Even though there's no sensation of speed at all, it's quite a, an extraordinary feeling really. Um, it's almost a sense of weightlessness, almost as if we were um, in a light aircraft or a helicopter or something skimming across the surface of the water rather than, you know, going across it in a boat. Uh, the waves are fairly choppy outside, but we've been getting a very smooth ride really quite a bit of noise that you can probably hear. In fact, I think I might just get the motors cut for a moment. Would you just cut them for a bit, please, Bob? That's better. Hovercraft uh, vehicles are quite commonplace in, in uh, Britain, United States, and also Japan. In fact, I think the, the latest model in Britain is capable of carrying about 250 passengers. This particular model here, I think, can carry ten people, so it's really a uh, small fry at this stage. But um, as yet, there are just no hovercraft vehicles being used for commercial purposes in Australia. So on the surface of us, it, it, it looks as if this is a, a lucrative new industry to be opened up here. But things aren't quite as rosy as they seem, as uh, John Ford knows only too well. He's one of the people who's been behind this project from the word go. Well, to coin it in a phrase, I think you can say this will be my last attempt at pioneering anything. I must admit I didn't know I was pioneering something. I thought we had a greater level of acceptability from customers than we did in actual fact. But uh, things like uh, legislation, getting legislation put out, giving us some guidelines to operate under, uh, insurance for operators so that uh, somebody visualising an operation can take out satisfactory insurance policies, and well, what sort of reaction have you had from finance companies, insurance companies? Well, this has been the most difficult one of the lot. Uh, the financial organisations are naturally reluctant to become too heavily involved at this stage until more operational experience has um, been had. Technical people uh, can usually go away quite convinced that we can come up with the goods, but commercial people um, are just that little bit uncertain, perhaps. The feature they're really plugging with this vehicle is its versatility. It can go practically anywhere. And it's quite fantastic watching it out in the water, uh, just skimming across a sandbar or an obstacle of rock or something like that. And they tell me that on land, anyway, it can even run over a human being without doing any damage at all. Um, there have been no practical tests yet. This is all in theory. So um, I thought this might be the time to try it out in a practical test. I'm just going to lie down on the beach here, and they're going to come straight over the top of me. We'll see what happens anyway. Apparently there's only been one other person in the world who's been run over by a, a hovercraft type vehicle and that was quite by accident. It was an old bloke up in Sweden and apparently he was walking along the beach a bit like th this with his bicycle and uh, a hovercraft came up quite out of the blue, didn't see him until it was too late. They had no choice but to run into him. They knocked him over, ran straight over the top of him and they looked back later on to uh, survey the mess and there was the old bloke standing up on his two feet with his bike back on its wheels waving his arms at them like mad shouting all sorts of Swedish obscenities. 
um, he, he survived anyway. I'm not going to try and do it with a bicycle. I think I'll just lie completely flat and see what happens. Okay, Bob? Right. Well, I'll lie myself down. 